chest. Just get one of your third pick. Uh, the Sony KG and full size. Tri-Point Hospital, this is Matter Squad 1122, paramedic Craddock, uh, line number 096. We're about 10 minutes out to your location with a 44-year-old male who caught a boat. Uh, total time in the water was approximately less than 15 minutes. Uh, there's no witness uh, injuries to this patient. At this time, he's conscious, alert, and oriented. Uh, last vital signs we have are 120 over 88. Blood pressure. Uh, EKG shows a normal sinus rhythm over a rate of about 60 with no ectopics. The pulse ox has been at 99%. We currently have them on a non rebreather of 15 liters per minute. Uh, last core temperature we got was a 97.2. Uh, again, we are about uh, 10 minutes out to your location. And do you have any further questions or orders? You're doing real good. Your blood pressure is good. Your pulse is good. Your oxygen saturation is doing real good, all right? Your core temperature seems to be coming up. We'll have you inside the ER in just a couple minutes, okay? All right. Do you have any other pains or discomforts or anything new that you are feeling now that you didn't feel before? Well, what we saw was a patient with mild hypothermia, and uh, the process that we used was a patient assessment with vital signs, and most importantly, we had to measure as well as monitor the progress of his core temperature. Uh, the therapies that we used included a uh, warming blanket, uh, also better known as a bear hugger. Uh, the bear hugger is a special blanket that has pockets in it, and we can actually infuse heated air into the pockets. Um, we can also adjust the temperature of that air that's uh, infused into the pockets. By placing the blanket on top yeah, of the patient, we're actually now. introducing heat into the body, but we're also preventing any uh, additional heat loss by the patient. Uh, there is a uh, thermometer that's attached to it, so we can constantly monitor the patient's core temperature. Um, it's much more accurate than getting an oral temperature. And we also want to make sure that the patient doesn't have rebound hypothermia um, after the, the heating blanket has been removed, which can happen. We started an IV. Uh, the IV solution had been also heated, although the IV bag yeah, to the, the normal touch to a, to a person would not feel very cold. Heater. 
relative to the patient's body temperature, IV fluids normally are colder uh, than the patient. So we needed to heat those up so that they were higher or at least matched his temperature so we would not be actually adding to his hypothermic state. Um, when I spoke with Mario, I told him that we were going to go ahead and heat him up until he was at a normal temperature, maintain the blanket for at least another hour, then we will remove the blanket but still continue to monitor the core temperature to make sure that he did not have rebound hypothermia. When a patient presents with moderate or severe hypothermia, uh, in addition to them being colder than normal, they're more at risk for cardiac dysrhythmias and cardiac arrhythmias, some of which could be fatal. Uh, the problem that we, the challenge that we have with that is that a lot of the medications that we would use to resuscitate a moderately or severely hypothermic patient don't work at low temperatures. Um, we would still go ahead and proceed with the warming process. Um, if the patient's unconscious, we would also need to intubate them. In other words, put a tube in their lungs and, and, and uh, administer heated oxygen that way. Uh, if the patient were to have a cardiac arrhythmia, uh, we would still use defibrillation to convert ventricular fibrillation or some of the other malignant arrhythmias. However, again, defibrillation is much less effective in patients who are moderately or severely hypothermic.